Respected brothers and elders, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala has created every human being with certain qualities, certain characteristics, certain traits and certain awsaf and sifat. Some of the things which we have inside us, you can't change, you can't remove. Some things are inherent within every human being. Some are in need and a necessity for mankind and for human beings in general. However, if they go beyond the boundary, then they can become harmful. Something which is leading off or leading from our previous kind of sort of lectures in relation to spirituality, something which links to our topic today is that of anger and ghadab in Arabic. Anger is that thing which, as I mentioned, you cannot physically do away with. Every human being has this inside him or her. If you don't have anger, that means you're a butter or a stone. You can't be a human being. Yes, our anger may be for the wrong reason, for the wrong cause, in the wrong capacity, in the wrong amount, in the wrong way we vent that anger. However, Rasulullah wasallam, as with all the other Mubarak teachings of deen, has instructed us, taught us, told us, how, how one should express themselves, how to curtail and stop anger, how to remain within the limits and the boundaries of anger. From the outset, let me just explain something to you. If Allah Ta'ala made a hukum that you can't get angry, that's not physically possible. Deen would be impossible to make amal upon. Even in Islam, if somebody kills somebody hurts, somebody does something to one individual, according to that level of juram, we take back badla. If there was no anger inside us, we wouldn't even be inclined toward this. So Allah Ta'ala knew the fitrat of insan. He knew what was necessity or necessary for insan and accordingly he made that jayiz permissible and halal for us. Within a certain boundary, within a certain way. Why does anger occur generally is because a person... Something happens which is khilaf of tabiyat of that individual. Something goes against that person's likes. There's a dislike. And anger can be made. I know one of our relatives, he put his son in some tuition in Pakistan, right? And his son wasn't performing too well. So when his son came home and he got his report, the father got wire and battered him, literally. He literally... He started bleeding He picked him up, threw him against the wall And started going to work Literally, physically striking this child It makes you think for a second, right? According to the jurum of that child Was that much of a saza necessary? Where you literally made him black and blue Blood came out of his body For the sake of what? What, so he didn't get marks like someone else's son. So you, know, you can't boast about your child in public. So that offended you. So Abkiawa, it's not ghusa for the child, it's ghusa for yourself. Give me a come on. You understand the thing here? Give me, look at me. Look at me. Look So this is his anger. He's getting angry because he's saying, look what people are going to say about my children. And he's gonna say, they're going to say him. You know, his son, his children, they're bekar. So your anger is not for the child, it's not for the deen, it's not for anything decent, it's again for your own self. A, br- a plate breaks at home, something happens at home, something, maybe something went wrong, but I don't know, <coughs> subhanallah, someone broke a plate, someone broke a cup. We get instantly angry, instantly frustrated because of that. The Prophet ﷺ, he didn't get angry for dunya. Comes and goes. He would get frustrated. He would sense anger when it came anything against the deen. Now this is, what, this, is the, this is the thermometer of testing now. When we see our children don't pray in salah, don't know no different from halal and haram, they don't even respond with assalamu alaikum, they say hello and hi. Every trait of of non-Islam is in our children, did we even get moved by that? We didn't even get moved. It's okay. The whole is like that. Zamana is like that. There's no worry and concern there. When a parent sees his children slowly, slowly, slowly going towards kufr, what is our reaction to that? 
What is our reaction to when we see them becoming gumrah? When we see them going off onto the wrong tracks? Allah my even parents, they hear of their stories of their <coughs> sons and daughters having extra, having ta'allukah, the outside marriage, is turned a blind eye to. But so long as people don't find out, it's okay. Let's turn a blind eye. So long as this thing doesn't get out and our izzat isn't ruined in public. The fear of your anger is not for Allah, it's for yourself. That's the difference between us and the Prophet ﷺ. That is the difference between us and Sahaba. That is the difference between us and the pious sulaha of deen. Okay, our anger is for dunya. A child comes home and says, I don't want to become a doctor anymore, I'm sorry. We kick off of us. We come home and find out that the child, because of college, miss salah, it's okay because it's, it's college, it's important. Can you see how our anger is fluctuating? We defend, subhanallah. I mean, I personally have experienced this. A youngster came to me and said, I want to get a job in the bank. I said, brother, in all due respect, it's a riba based institution. I know the whole world is moving in that direction, but it doesn't mean you have to do it. It's not permissible. Do something else with your math skills. Become a physicist or something. I don't know, get into engineering. But just use something else. Don't, don't do that. Wallahi qasam. The father told him, don't, don't speak to this guy anymore. Don't speak to him. This, he, he, this is extreme. Like, how, how can you not? This is the modern day we're living in. Okay. Modern day we're living in. We'll come to Crowley on a Friday, Saturday night and see where people are going on a Friday, Saturday night and what they're doing. So we just say, well, it's, it's the modern day, so we just allow it. My child wants to drink alcohol, it's okay, we'll just allow it. He wants to go and make zina, it's okay, just allow it. Because it's the modern day zamana. Wait, where are you going to draw this line with that thinking? If something is permissible in Islam, it's permissible. Allah gave it for a reason. If it's haram, Allah made it haram for a reason. That doesn't mean we close the doors to tarakki or advancement or technological advancement or worldly advancement or wealth. We're not against any of that. We welcome it all. But however, when it's at the cost of losing our deen, losing our Islam, losing our identity, losing what we have dear to as being Muslim, that's where we draw the line. Ab sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his anger wasn't for dunya. Our anger is for dunya. His anger was for deen. Our anger, anger relatively less is for the deen. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not for deen. Relatively less. Torah, hai? But look at this a little bit. And actually, when you go home and you see all the children, someone on an iPad, one on an iPod, someone in front of YouTube, come inside, father working 12 hours shifts, they come home, Salaam alaikum, yeah, hi, dad. That hurts us. It hurts us. I, 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 I slaved my life away from you. We have that, but then again, it's anger, but then it also comes back to us as well, isn't it? Like indirectly, it, it, it does affect us. So there's an element there that our anger, again, is for ourselves. But there's an element of deen involved. That's why I said less. It's a fitri thing. As an imam, when I was imam of the masjid, I would get phone calls all the time. Husband and wife fighting, people fighting with each other. Allah, wallahi, the amount of times I got this phone call, right? Husband and wife fighting, feuds. All the sabab, the whole basis is purely based on anger and ghadab. If we just learn to control our mouths, Allah ki when we're angry, we would never have, I would even be as, as jurat to say, 80% of the problems we have, 90% of the problems which we have. Because when we're angry, boom, we start making, we, we start saying madness. Nabi Sallallahu mentioned, إِذَا غَدِبَ أَحَدَكُمْ فَلْيَسْكُدْ When any, any one of you is angry, just be quiet, remain silent at that time. Why did Rasulullah Sallallahu say this? Why? Why did he tell us this? Because he knew there will come a time when people will start being crazy with their words. They will, anger will overtake them. How many times I've received a text message, I was angry, I issued my wife in, in divorce in anger. Is it, are we, can we still get back together? Allah ke bande. Khushi mein koon talaq deta hai? But you're not an Urdu, yeah? Khushi mein koon talaq deta hai? Who gives talaq in happiness? I come home, my wife is so much, you made the best food, the house is great, but give me something. Okay, do you have a talaq? Wait, who the heck gives the like when they're happy? No one. So to use that as a cop-out, I, I, was, I was upset, I was angry. You couldn't control your anger. Don't blame the deen for that. Blame yourself. Anger management was apart from deen. Rasulullah said, told us the tadbir. When you're angry, fal yaskud, be quiet. Move yourself away to such an extent. If you think that there's going to be a harm between you and anger, there's something that's going to create that anger, move yourself away from that situation or move that thing away. And I'll give you an example from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. He never hated anybody. He never discriminated against anybody. But Washi was that individual who killed Hamza radiallahu anhu. Yeah, Uhud, long story, history. Anyway, what did he say to Washi? He said, look, 
It's a long story, mashallah, beautiful, beautiful incident, how he accepted Islam and Allah sent down verses of Quran. It's a long story. But anyway, what happened was Rasulullah made one request. You've entered into the brotherhood of Islam, but I'll just make a request. When I'm speaking, just don't sit directly in front. The reason for this is because he would be stirred with emotion. There would be a possibility that anger could become part of myself. So we learn from what usul from here. If something causes you anger, move that thing out of the way. Move it out of the way. And he didn't discriminate and say, right, you're never allowed to come back into the masjid. You're not part of us. No, no, just, just when I'm delivering, just not in front. Just, I'll give you a chip, but just, you know, if, I, if I'm looking at you, I'm going to remind myself of what happened. And it's going to hurt me. It's going to affect me. I'm going to feel sad. And then there's another aspect here as well. Because when Rasulullah sallallahu is angry, Allah becomes angry. So for your own bettery, sit to the side. You see? So anyways... That's one method. So if something is causing anger, move that thing away, whatever it is that's affecting a person's life. Additionally, we've been taught certain tadabir, certain things that if you feel angry at the time, what to do? Now, mashallah, I tell you what, you can go on an anger management course and they'll tell you loads of fluffy things, charge you a couple of hundred quid, you feel that you've got to sink out of it. When the deen tells us something, by Allah, there's no hit and miss here. It's going to work. But because it's coming from deen, they know, well... Which scientist endorsed it? Which business professional endorsed it? Did someone with an MBA deliver the lecture? So um, it's Dini, so um, we'll take it with a pinch of salt. This is Esa Sekamdari. I swear by Allah, if I had a book and I said this is written by a PhD professor in Cambridge teaching for 50 years, people would say, listen, this is serious now. So when the Prophet ﷺ told us something, we should think these are the solutions to the problem. Anything which is written in that book is false because it doesn't fit in this line here. There's a few additional things that could help, but these are the things that will definitely help. Number one, he said, silence yourself. Move that thing away from yourself. Read, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem. Read the Ta'awwudh, seek protection in Allah from the accursed shaitan because anger is also generated because of shaitan. In addition to that as well, <clears throat> he mentioned to make wudu, if you can, drink water, change your seating posture, move yourself from that frame of mind into another reference, i.e. move yourself. These are simple, simple things you and I can do, and that will stop the train of negative thoughts and the anger getting beyond its, rec- or re- re- beyond its permissible boundary. Rasulullah also encouraged us as well, ma tajarra'a abdun. There's no better thing that a person swallows for the sake of Allah than swallowing anger. If you want to swallow something, swallow your anger for the sake of Allah. Now, here Rasulullah mentioned, You know it's difficult. I don't want to forgive you, bro, because you annoyed me, you get me. But I'm going to swallow it for the sake of Allah. I'm going to let Gula Ebi Baigon for the sake of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the thing which Allah ta'ala loves the most. That thing which is swallowed the most, is most loved by Allah, is that thing when a person swallows the anger. Because letting it out, I might go beyond the permissible boundary, then I'll become a valim, then I'll become unjust, I'll become an oppressor. That's where it becomes impermissible in the deen. So look, anger is fitri, it's natural. You will get angry in your life, it's a part of being a human being. Naturally, and why is this anger here? Because now, for example, I've got my shoes on the side. Someone wants to go and rob them. What, you think I'm going to let him rob them shoes? Of course not. I'm not going to say, oi, what are you doing, mate? They're mine. Get your own. If I want to give hadiya, that's another thing. But you can't jack my shoes. You can't jack and take my car. That's my anger kicking, my fitra. That thing which Allah created me on. If I see, Allah forbid, someone walking towards my family with an ill intent to hurt them, my anger is going to kick in natural as insan, as instinct. We need anger as part of us. When we see the commands of Allah being broken, we feel moved with emotion. If we didn't have that anger, we wouldn't even be bothered. But it's when it gets out of the boundary, beyond something un-Islamic, something which is not called for, or only for dunya, that's when it's a problem. So this is why I say, inshallah, learn to acquaint ourselves with the things of deen. Look at ourselves, internalize. No one can sit here and say, Mulam Sahib, I don't get angry. Nonsense. We all get angry. But it's what we get angry for. For the right reason or the wrong. So this is why we need to analyze our daily life. And whenever we find ourselves <coughs> slipping out of the boundary, at that time is to turn to Allah, ask for forgiveness, and also to analyze ourselves. Remove the thing which can cause harm. Change our frame of reference. Seek protection from Allah. And while, last but not least, if a person finds it extremely difficult, that they keep on getting angry over a certain thing, 
A person should contemplate on a daily basis and think to themselves, I'm showing my anger here now. Allah Ta'ala on the Day of Judgment can show me even worse. Istihzar. Slowly, slowly, slowly a person will not remove it, but control it. May Allah give us tawfiq, inshaAllah. Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfirullah wa atubu ilayhi.